East Hartford, make some noise. Good morning. If you're joining us online, welcome. Give us a shout out in the comments. Let us know you are here worshiping with us. We're so excited just to be in church today, right? I just woke up this morning and I thought, what a privilege it is that we get to be in church. It's just awesome. My name is Kendra. I'm the Director of Communications here at Crossroads, and I get the privilege of welcoming you this morning. Listen, in this season, I don't know about you, but we've had to get creative, right, and do things differently. And the thing is, we are the church, right? We can be the church. The church is not just a building but it's us, we are the church, Christ living in us. And so we've had some awesome opportunities lately to do just that, to be the church and to be an outreach and a beacon of hope in our community. And so this last Friday, we had a blood drive and it was incredible. We had volunteers helping, we partnered with the American Red Cross and we just saw an outpouring of love from our community to give blood, to donate blood. We even had a couple who came and it was their anniversary and they celebrated their anniversary by donating blood. How awesome is that? That's just so cool. (laughs) So we've done a lot of things already and we're gearing up for some more. And so this weekend and next weekend, we have a new mission for you. Are you ready for it? we are doing a back to school supply drive. So we need new backpacks filled with crayons and pencils and markers and glue sticks because we gotta get our kids ready for school. So we're doing um, this with both our East Windsor Community Services and the East Hartford Sunset Ridge School. So we're collecting these donations. You can go on Amazon, order a bunch, or stop by Staples or Target or Walmart and just be a part of what we're doing. Be a part of loving our community. It's just so exciting that we get to do the work of God. Amen? Awesome. Well, will you pray with me as we get ready to worship? God, we just thank you. Lord, we love you. We're so privileged to be able to come together, even in this unique way, in this new format, and we get to bring glory to your name. So God, I just pray that as we worship, that you would hear our hearts. You would hear hearts that want to lift you up, that want to surrender everything to you. And Lord, I pray that as we hear your word, you would transform us. You would shift our hearts and our minds, that we would be ready for what you have for us. Lord, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship. Well, good morning, church. Come on, wherever you are, let's stand to our feet as we worship. Come on, put your hands together, church.
Amen. Do you believe that this morning, church? Come on, let's give him some praise.
let's declare this together, church. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Sing, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord?
on, church, if you believe that today, we're going to sing out this other song. It goes like this. How great. Well, good morning, Crossroads family. How are you today? It's good to be here with you in the house of the Lord, and uh, we're, we're excited. Uh, how many of you know he, he makes all things new? And, and I love new things. When you get them, they feel new. And then a week later, not so much, right? But, but uh, how, how is it to have somebody in our lives that is continually making all things new? If you were here with us last weekend, you know we concluded last week in a series we were doing on the book of Revelation. I want to make sure you're aware 
uh, what, what we've been telling you about. If you go to our church website today, you can do a deeper dive into the book of Revelations. If you go to the, the little hamburger menu in the upper left of our website and uh, click on that, then go to groups and classes, you'll see a specific independent study on the book of Revelation where they'll, they'll go through a, a much more extended discussion and uh, you can just take that step a little bit farther. I hope you've enjoyed the, the book of Revelation as we were talking about that. Today, we're gonna begin a new series where we're talking about the healing ways of Jesus. Uh, those of you who are here with us in the sanctuary, uh, maybe even at home right now, uh, I want you to just say the name of Jesus with me. You ready? One, two, three. I think there's just something about saying his name that brings a, a portion of healing into our lives. Get, get into a tough spot in your life somewhere uh, and, and, and just say his name and see what it does to your heart, to your spirit. So we're, we're gonna do an introduction to this series today and then we'll, we'll go over the next couple of weeks and, and talk it out a little bit. But as we begin the series, let's start off by going way back to the beginning. We're gonna set a foundation for the, for the whole thing. Uh, maybe talk about some things that most of us are aware of, but it's a good foundation. The Bible declares to us that God desires for all of us to be well, well physically, mentally, well spiritually. And in the beginning, God specifically declared that the creation of mankind was a very good thing. Adam and Eve had bodies that were strong. There were no infirmities that we would know of in any way, but Directly or indirectly, all of the infirmities that we deal with on earth, whether they be physical or mental or emotional or spiritual, all of the infirmities that we run into here on this earth come from man's disobedience to God's word. I want you to think about that for, for just a second. God's word all of the infirmities that exist, exist and come out of disobedience to God's word. That is, mankind's sin. We violated what? God's word. God said, this is how you should live. His word, was, in that, in that sense, was spoken forth. His word went forth and it became the, the law of the universe. And when mankind violates God's word, rejection of God's word has its consequences. And, you know, let, let's be really honest. Uh, people today in the society that we live in, um, uh, we don't like to hear the word consequences a whole lot. We, we want things to just kind of be like, hey, because this is what we want to do, if we want to do it, we should do it, and there shouldn't be any consequences. It's, you know, it should be right because, uh, you know, uh, the way it is. But real life tells you everything you do, everything you say has consequences. Some of them are good consequences. Some of them are bad consequences. But everything has consequences. And maturity is all about understanding what consequences are and making appropriate decisions based on those consequences. But every infirmity that comes to mankind has its roots in the fall through sin. That is, mankind violated the word of God, and there are consequences that come with that. Now, that doesn't mean uh, necessarily that if you have a sickness or somebody around you has a sickness, that that sickness is uh, a direct result of some specific sin in your life. That is, there's a lot of people today who will teach, well, if you have a sickness, that sickness that you have is because of some specific sin that you've had, or sometimes they'll even say, or, or the sin that your parents had. And so the reason you have that is, is because of this specific sickness. That, that doesn't line up with the Bible at all. In fact, Jesus clearly points this out in the Gospel of John uh, in a moment when he was encountering a, a man who had been blind uh, since birth. His disciples, in the midst of this uh, discussion, ask him, they say, Lord, is this man, is he blind because of his own sin or is he blind because of the sin of his parents? What, well, what's the deal with that? And Jesus says, well, that, that's not how this all works at all. That's not, that's not how the concept of sickness and, and infirmities and, and, and problems like this work. He says this in John chapter nine, verse three. He says, neither this man 
nor his parents sinned. You see, the blindness that's there isn't a result of some specific sin that they did. And it's not like you can avoid that specific sin and then you'll avoid blindness. The idea that he's trying to get to is blindness comes because of sin proper. There is sin throughout our world and that sin has corrupted our world and now some sickness that we experience comes simply as a result of the fact that our world has been marred by, has been corrupted by the nature of sin that's there. Now, let's be really honest. It is possible at times for some sins that we have in our life to produce some specific sicknesses. You think of the concept of sexual immorality. The Bible will tell you, pursue sexual immorality, and we see it practically speaking, there are some sicknesses that will come specifically out of that. But it doesn't necessarily mean that if you have an illness or if somebody has an illness, that there's a specific sin associated with that. You get the concept, right? Or again, we're just laying the foundation of the problem here up front. Here's the good news. When we are eventually in heaven with God again, those of us who who have placed our faith in Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us that in that day, God's word, say God's word. God's word will again rule and reign. There will be no sin, there will be no sickness. All of our problems with infirmities and sickness began when mankind violated God's word. And if we jump to the other end of time, God's word will again rule and reign and all of the stuff will be gone and God's word will be the standard that that provides no sickness anymore, none of that. But here as we live on this earth, there are many types of diseases and they are here because sin has marred this world. And so there are all kinds of infirmities that we deal with. uh, You you may be here today and, and, and you understand Uh, that there are things which get us down. They control us. They harm us. And when we talk about uh, what's important in our lives, it's important for us all to understand that the average human being today, our physical needs are very high on our priority list. In fact, I'm gonna tell you, they are at the top of almost everybody's priority list. You say, well, I thought the love of money was. Well, yes, the love of money fits at the top of your priority list, but let me tell you this. Even people who are rich or poor, doesn't matter which, when our physical body gets in trouble, we will give every amount of money that we have away. We will spend money that we don't have. People go bankrupt today trying to solve the problem of physical body illness. Our top priority becomes our physical needs. But can I also tell you that our physical needs aren't necessarily God's top priority. They're they're high on his list, they're valuable and important on his list, but the Bible tells us God is even more concerned with problems that rest within our thoughts our emotions, or our uh, reactions to life. We focus on our desires for physical healings. God focuses his desire for our hearts to be healed. And there's something unique and special about that. But, all right, so just, just, just as a, all of that was intended to be a quick backstory. We haven't gotten into any of the details of it. We haven't gone back and, and extrapolated in detail in any way. That's just kind of a summation of how we've gotten from where uh, we started, where God intended us be, to, to how we are today and how we're walking forward. Now, now we're gonna jump to what is our text for today uh, that we're going through. And this text is, is kind of a, um, an underlying foundation to the whole series as we walk through this. Our text today is found in Psalm 107, verse 20. And I'm just taking a portion of that verse to illustrate where we're headed. Here's what it says in Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. I want want to ask you to say that with me. Ready? Here we go. He sent his word and healed them. Notice up front 
that it was the violation of the word of God that caused the consequences of sin to come into our life, into our word, world. And now the Bible tells us that it is the word of God which he sends on the other side to also bring healing. And when the Bible talks about the word of God, there's a lot of different variations that come along with this. There is the spoken word of God, where God speaks. There is the written word of God, which is the Bible that, that he has given us to, it, it, his love letter to all mankind. It is his word uh, that, that, that brings healing. And then there is Jesus Christ, the word of God. Go back and read uh, the book of John, the first of it. It, it talks about Jesus uh, being the word of God uh, in, in flesh. He sent his word and healed them. And I, I wanna start the, the rest of our discussion today with a question, and I wanna ask you to think about this. Can you receive in your personal life that truth today? He sent his word and healed them. Are you ready to receive that word in your life today? Now, if you read through the whole chapter in Psalm, Psalm 107, uh, if you read through it fully, fully uh, you'll see within there that there are many people who do not receive the word of God. In the same way that Adam and Eve didn't receive the word of God at the beginning, there are many today who don't. Verse number 11 tells us that some will rebel against the word of God. It says that some will scorn the counsel, which is God's word given to us, the counsel of the most high. Verse 17 says that some were fools and they rebelled and suffered for their own sins. All of this helps us to see and understand that God has has a his word that he wants to give to us, but can I just say that there are many of us today, including many within the church, who aren't ready to receive his word because we've got our own word for our life. We wanna follow our word, our belief, our, our understanding of things, but God would say to us, my word has sent to you that we might provide healing. Now, uh, the end, the very end of the chapter, if you get down to the end of the chapter, you see the summation of where we're going, and I always, always like to know where we're headed at the end. So verse 43 says this, whoever is wise and will observe these things shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. I want you to remember those terms because it's gonna wrap everything together at the end. The loving kindness of the the Lord. Uh, my, 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 my principal uh, projection that I'm trying to get here is uh, the loving kindness of the Lord is where we find our healing. It's where everything is found. It's, it's, it's where, where it all rests. God's word, God's word tells us that within the body of Christ, you know, we're, we're here, we're, we're here uh, uh, present in, in this sanctuary together. There's, there's many that are watching online today. All of us together are the body of Christ. Within the body of Christ, there are those who have been given gifts of healing. Now, the term gift there is a plural word. It's gifts, gifts of healing, and it indicates that there's different methods or different ways of healing that God uses within the body of Christ to bring healing to us. And, and so we wanna pause and, and say thank God for Christian doctors and counselors and psychologists and, and, and those who bring encouragement in ways uh, that produce healing and all kinds of things like that. Thank God for those who, who he calls out from among us, men and women who have gifts from the Holy Spirit in, in, in all of these areas and they bring healing into our lives. But, but here's, here's, this, here's a principle that I want us to focus on. The focus in healing should never be upon mankind should never be upon a man or a woman. The focus is the healing ways of Jesus. Jesus, who is the word. Now I say that because there's a pattern that has been established within the church over the years, which sometimes causes us to confuse this. And some of you are very aware of the pattern. You haven't necessarily thought about it now. How it, uh, how, it, how it confuses us, but here's the pattern within a church. 
an evangelist comes or a pastor comes and a message is preached and, and there's songs that are sung and now, now at the end of this time, people are asked to form a line and somebody comes, you know, people come and they lay hands on us and, and they pray uh, that, the, that the Lord would heal us. Now, that pattern does not, vi- it's not a violation of God's word. Um, it, it, it's actually following what, what God asks us to do in praying for people. But here, here's the problem for us as human beings. That pattern many times causes confusion in our lives uh, because our focus should not be upon mankind, but upon Christ. Our focus should not be upon the minister, but upon the word of God, Jesus Christ. And, And the following of that pattern through the years has caused many of us in the church to focus on the individual who's doing the praying and lose some of the focus on Jesus Christ, who who is where all this comes from. Here's the point. Man can only treat symptoms, but it is God who heals. Mankind can reach out to God in prayer, but there is nothing about what we are doing that is causing the healing. The healing comes from God. And when we lose focus of that, and for whatever reason, we place our focus on on some man or some woman uh, who God is using in a special way, we lose the principle of where we're supposed to be heading. Remember this, and this is all in, in, in way of introduction. God's plan for us, God's intentions for us are all good. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. They are plans to give you a, a future and a, and a hope. In the New Testament, James 1, 17 says, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father who created all the lights in the heavens and he never changes or casts a, a shifting shadow. Here's the principle. This this is the the underlying principle. When we're dealing with infirmities, when we're dealing with sicknesses, we, we can get confused on this, but the Bible consistently tells us that it is Satan who is a thief that comes to steal and to rob and to destroy in our lives. Our enemy's plans are plans for destruction, but God's word tells us that Jesus is our great physician. And Jesus himself is, has said that he has come to set people free from the things that are, that, are, that are controlling them today. He's come to bind up the brokenhearted. He's come to produce healing in our lives. And I love this Old Testament prophecy uh, uh, that comes out of Malachi. It says this, in Malachi 4, verse 3, it says, for you who fear my name, and, and when it talks about fear, fear there, it's this idea, this understanding that there's an awe, there's a reverence for, for who, who, who Jesus is. For you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. And that's, a, that's, a, that's just a powerful, powerful prophecy. Jesus Christ has healing ways about him. And he said, I have come, I have come to give you life in abundance, in abundance. And that means spiritual life, that means physical life, that means emotional life, that means financial life, that means health in your life, marriage health, family health, you name it kind of health. Jesus wants to bring healing into every area of your life. If there is sickness or infirmity, his desire is to bring healing. Now, again, here's the big question. Can you really get to the place where you believe that God wants to do that for you? I say that because many people today either don't understand that or they're not willing to operate in that mindset, in that way of thinking. Why? Well, when tragedy strikes, they say, it's kind of hard for me to believe that God would permit this to happen. Why is it that God is permitting this to happen? Or where is God when I need him? Where is God? Here's our reality today. 
our mortal bodies are destined to decay because of how original sin has caused our world to become corrupted. We are bound, the Bible says, to decay as we're here in this life. But when we follow his counsel, that is, when we follow his word, works of healing can begin to occur in our lives. Psalm 107.20 says it this way. He sent his word and he healed them. Now, I believe that healing is a body ministry. That is, healing belongs to God's church and all of us are, are to share in it. When Jesus Christ was here on this earth, he was that body. He was God in the flesh. He was walking among people and everywhere that he went, he carried with him healing in his hands, healing in, in his voice. Jesus carried with him healing everywhere. Today, Scripture tells us that you and I, you and I are the body of Christ. We are intended to be the continuation of that healing ministry that Jesus has here on this earth. That's why the Bible tells us that God has given us uh, his Holy Spirit to give us gifts. That's why the Holy Spirit empowers us. That's why the word of God tells us that we're to pray for one another. We're to encourage one another. We're to build one another up because within our uh, body, there is healing that comes. Who's the healer? He's the healer, but he many times works through us, the members of his body. Some people today think that, listen, only the pastor can pray. Only the evangelist can pray. Only the media personality can pray. But that's, that's we, we try not to operate that way here at all. You know, we're, we're in this COVID time and we're doing everything different and, and we've got people here in the sanctuary, but we don't operate the same at the end of the service or in the middle of the service or in the beginning of the service. But when we're in normal times, we have times of prayer for people at the end of every one of our services. And usually, whoever the pastor is who is teaching or preaching, we don't go down and do the prayer. You know why? Because there's been enough focus on the minister uh, presenting the word already. We want to present the idea that that minister is not the source uh, or connection to God, that our whole body is. And so we take leaders from all around our church and we ask them to come and pray. Why? Because God does not work through a man or a woman or a preacher or a teacher. God works through us. And Jesus has healing in his ways. Today, we are his body and we have those healing ways about us. So, one of the questions that we're asking as we go through this series is, what were some of the healing ways of Jesus? Today, we, we've taken most of our time talking about an introduction to the concept. And so today, I wanna leave you with just one quick he, way, one, one of the quick ways that Jesus has of, of healing uh, that, that, that is within him. And some would say that this is the most important side of the healing ways of Jesus. It's, it's one that I can explain in a short amount of time, one that I think we can take with us and, and live out practically. Uh, here it is. Here, here's first, the n number one that we're going to talk about, the healing ways of Jesus. Jesus showed people that he loved them. Say love. Love. Jesus showed people that he had real love for them. You cannot minister healing to anyone until you really love them. It cannot be done. And it's most important that we get this. His body, the church, is called to love one another. We are called to love people. We are called to love each other. So how is it that Jesus loved people? There were lots of ways. I mean, he gave his own life for them, right? But as he was here living amongst people, walking amongst people, the Bible gives a lot of different uh, thoughts to that. I wanted to share just one with you out of Matthew chapter 9, verse number 36. It says this, and this is, this is one way that we, I believe, as his body, 
can become people that provide healing or bring healing through his body as he works through us. It says this about Jesus. When he saw the crowds, he was moved with, what's the word? Compassion on them. So, so let's ask the question. What are you moved with today in your life when you see someone in sin? When you see someone sin in your life, what are you moved with? Can, can I just be really honest and tell you what I'm moved with naturally? Usually it's anger. I'm upset because their sin is either affecting me in some way, right? And we, we see this on the roads driving in our cars all the time, right? Their sinful ways of putting themselves first, not following the rules of the road, not caring about anybody else is affecting me and their sin causes anger within me, right? Or their sin that they're doing is, is disobeying God and again, all of this, I feel like I have this righteous anger that rises up within me to say, what are you doing and stop it? And it's not a stop it trying to help them. The first initial thing that rises up within me, that moves me, is this anger that says, this is wrong and you are evil. So some of us, it's not on the road, it's in our house. And you have somebody that's there with you in your home. You may be married to them, they may be your kids. It may be your parents and their sin that rises up within them and your response is first and foremost, anger. Jesus showed compassion. What are you moved with today when someone does not share your opinion? When someone has a different opinion than yours, what are you moved with today? Are you moved by tears for their need are you gentle with them? Do you show them respect? Do you love them with the compassion of Christ? In the church, in the church, we tend to get all excited when people come and they have a physical problem. Something's going on. They're diagnosed with something. Something's happened to them physically. When, when we see an infirmity that something has happened physically, we cry for people. We pray for them. We offer to take them to the hospital. We offer to help them find a cure. We do anything that we can. This person is injured in their body. We've got to help them. But when people have infirmities that are affecting their soul, their spirit, their emotions, do we have compassion on them in the same way? Do we see their needs and have compassion and extend to them the love that God would have us extend? When co someone comes with deep scars in their life, Jesus was moved with compassion for them. He knew how to be gentle. He knew how to love them. Healing starts with love and love shows compassion. You can't resent somebody and love them fully at the same time. Love makes room for people and where they are in the moment. The Bible tells us that love is gentle, love is kind, love does not put itself forth. Now what, what am I talking about here today? I'm talking about the healing ways of Jesus. God sent his word and healed them. Can you imagine what it would look like if as a church body, we began to make a foundation of who we are, loving people around us. There are many of us who are here who are a part of the church body today. You recognize the power in that because what you're screaming out for in your life right now is to be loved. What you need more than any physical ailment being fixed is someone to love you, to show God's, to be God's uh, uh, skin on earth where, where you can be touched with the love of God. That kind of love 
brings healing into people's lives. Do you need healing today? Do you need healing from sin? Do you need healing from anxiety, from loneliness? Do you, do you need healing from some disease that is, that is uh, attacking your body? Do you need spiritual healing? Do you need physical healing? Do you need emotional healing? If so, I want to encourage you to start here. One, begin to thank God for his love in your life. When you begin to thank God for his love, you'll see his love in a new way and that love will begin a healing work in your life in the moment that you don't even know that you need that will help you make it through the situation. Begin to thank God for his love in your own life and then uh, begin to, to focus outward on others and love others that are around you. Whatever it is that you're going for, the second step, Reach out to others and start to love on them, even those that hate you or maybe those that you've hated. You say, I don't hate anybody. Well, think about the family member that you don't want coming to Christmas this year, that you haven't spoken to in 10 years. Love that comes in begins a healing work. Let me remind you of the text, Psalm 107, verse 20, and we're just about done. It says this, he sent his word and healed them. Let me read the, the end of the verse. And he delivered them from their destruction. And here, let's, let's tie the whole thing together because I wanna read the next verse to you. Verse 21 goes on, it says this. Thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men. God's word says to us, I love you. That is Jesus. That is his written word. That is his spoken word. And I love you brings healing into lives. Listen, as we're closing, let me tell you just one quick story. Just, 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 just over 48 hours ago, two, between two and three days ago, I think it was Friday, early, early, early Friday morning, one of the members of our congregation, uh, his name is Paul Tugas, went to be with the Lord. Paul is a guy, if you, if you know him, um, you know, the one thing I would say is, is he had faith like Abraham through his life. His faith was amazing. He's, he's battled the last number of years through cancer. He's, he's, he's walked through all sorts of things. Paul, Paul's been an amazement for me to watch. He's been an encouragement for me to watch. But there's a story that Paul, over the last, last uh, couple of years, he's been telling me uh, time and time again. He's told me when I visited him in the hospital. He's told me when he's come over to my home. Uh, at times, he, he, he ran a, an appliance repair business. And so he's been to my house and repaired appliances, those kinds of things. He's told me this multiple times. But he says, Sean, he says, some, some time ago, he said, I... I it was like I had a dream or a vision, and, 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 and it, was like, it was like God was talking to me. He said, in the, in the middle of all of that, God shared with me something that he wanted me to do. And I'm gonna be honest, it was, he said it was, it was a little odd. He says, this is what God asked for me to do. Any time that I found myself alone with somebody, every time that I found myself alone with somebody, Paul said, God asked me to say these words. To them, Jesus loves you. That's it. Simple. Kind of sweet, right? A little weird at times. He said, I committed to doing it, and then I'm going to be really honest. I found myself in some uncomfortable situations because I repair appliances for people that I don't know. And so I would go into their house to repair their appliance and I would find myself alone with them in the kitchen and God would remind me, you're just supposed to say, Jesus loves you. And I would think, this is going to be weird. But I'd made a promise. And through the days and through the weeks and through the months, Every time that I'm alone with somebody, I found myself saying the words, oh, so concerned. <laughs> Jesus loves you. He says, Sean, I can't tell you the number of times that in the midst of that, I would see people who would be standing there and 
their head would bow, their shoulders would slump. To some of the nurses in the hospital when I would mention it, they would pause and a tear would start to run down their eyes. And here's what you could see. You could see Jesus touching a heart that's broken, that's needing to know that they're loved, that's needing to know that God cares about them. Three little words, Jesus loves you. There are healing ways of Jesus. As a church, what would it look like if we started to learn some of those ways and put them to action in our lives? Let's stand and pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to an end of another one of our worship times here together, one more time I want to pause. And I want to thank you for your, your word, your written word that you have given us that leads us and guides us into all truth. Father, would you help us today not just to be hearers of your word, but help us to know how to apply these things to our life. In this way of love, Lord, would you, uh, would you introduce to our mind's eye some of the people that we interact with that need to know your love? God, they may even be individuals that we're frustrated with or angry with, people who have hurt us, people who have harmed us. But in this moment, would you cause compassion to come into our hearts and in our lives and help us to begin to take the steps to love them as you would love them. We give you praise. Amen. We're coming to the end of our worship time here together in just a moment. Our worship team is going to sing one more song. When they sing it, you're going to hear a declaration of the power of Jesus and how, how he is capable of making all things new again in our lives. I want to ask you to listen to the words, one, maybe sing them if you know them, and, and, and declare it. There's something about declaring truth that we know that helps us to stand on it more strong. If you're here today and you have a need that's in your life, while they're singing these declarative words, I want to encourage you to bow your heads, bow your hearts, and believe that Jesus, the Word of God, has the power to heal your life. He's looking at you today. He wants the very best for you. Place your faith in him and as we sing this song, reach out to him and believe that he is going to begin a healing work in you. God bless you as we sing. He's a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. thank you that you have made a way for our sins, that which brought all this corruption in the world, for our sins to be removed from our lives as far as the east is from the west. And today, you have called us to be your body here in this world. 
as we leave this place, help us to be ever mindful of the fact that we're surrounded by people today who need your love. And we are called to be the ones to love them with your everlasting love so that we can point them to you and you can change their lives in the here and now and change their lives for eternity. We give you all the praise. Amen and amen and amen. Church. Crossroads, thanks so much for joining us in our online service. We are so blessed to have you and to be able to have an online campus. But I want to make sure you know that you are still invited to our in-person services happening Saturday night and Sunday morning in our East Hartford and our East Windsor campus. We believe that being part of a community is essential for the growth and development of a Christian. Now in these times, it requires us to be a little bit creative and we wanna be creative with you. So we have small groups coming up in the fall that will meet both online and in person. Stay tuned for more information coming soon and feel free to always check out our website for those details. Thanks, God bless.